or Steve June. Your line is live. Corey, thank you for the time today and congratulations on your impressive win in your Bellator debut last November. Do you feel like punching out Melvin Manhoff also punched your ticket into this light heavyweight tournament? Hey, yeah, of course. If I would have lost to Melvin, I'm sure they would have put him in a light heavyweight tournament over me if the tournament were to happen either way. You know, um, I'm a firm believer in the way life happens, things happen off of outcomes, you know. So if I lost, who knows? They might not have done the light heavyweight tournament. I think the fact that me beating Melvin and everybody saying, Corey should get Nemkov next, and then they signed Rumble and Yo, and I was like, oh, he should get Nemkov next, and then Phil's name was in there. They figured the best way to settle this beef is put them all in a tournament, and whoever comes out is the champ. Well, speaking of that fact that people were calling for you to face Nemkov next, is it – a, a difficult proposition for you that you have to go through the tournament to get to him, or do you relish that opportunity? No, I relish that. You know, I'm I'm a shine like a diamond, baby. Uh, like I said earlier, I I compete to the level of my opponents. You know, I've always had that problem as a kid. I can go against a guy who was trash and go around and it'd be a super close match, and then go against the state champ and possibly end up beating him pretty bad or lose by one point or something. Uh, and that's, I feel this tournament is just going to be a whole bunch of state champions, you know, national champs. You got the guys that was world titles champs and two-time belt champs, and you got all these big names in one bracket. So you just have to show up with your A game. And I'm just excited. I'm just ready to go out there and just be the best me I can be for three fights, get this belt, and then just continue the rest of my career that same way. We look forward to seeing how you do in the tournament. Thank you, Corey. Thank you. Jay Anderson. Hey, Corey, uh, thanks very much. And, you know, <clears throat> I'm just wondering about your initial reaction to uh, getting Yag Shemiradov, and I, I'm not sure if I got that right. I mean, were you kind of like the rest of us and had to run uh, to do a quick Google, or was he on the radar at all? No, I definitely had to go do a quick Google. Google. First of all, I had to make sure my manager spelled his name right, because I thought he was – butt dialing me and just send a bunch of the random letters and uh when I put it in it actually came up I was like wait this is a, this is a person's name and uh then after doing my research it was like okay can't look past this guy because we didn't know him this guy actually has a pretty good style he's got a pretty good record and he's well known from where he's from you know did my research he's a big name over where he's from and just because we didn't know him doesn't mean anything so with that I'm not looking past anybody absolutely and that having been said, I mean, were you hopeful that maybe with the performance over Manhoff, it might be you getting the title shot right off the bat? I mean, you're always hopeful for the title shot. That's what we're all here for. If you're not here to be the best, I mean, why are you even here? You know, here for a check, you should have just left a long time ago because that's when injuries and stuff happen. I'm here to be the best. I'm here to get the belt. So 100% after that fight and this talk started going and my manager was like, hey, it's a good chance it could happen. I was excited. Like, yeah, let's do it. And then I hear – a couple weeks ago that they think about doing this tournament and now it's official and I'm still excited because now it's like, there's no guessing game of what's next. And I was talking to one of my teammates, take me back to my wrestling days. to like a wrestling tournament, the brackets, you go there, you see the bracket, you know exactly what you got to do to get to the championship. And that's the plan. So there's no guessing around who's going to be the champ, who's going to get there. It's you go out there and you do your job. And you do your job for three fights. You are the champ. There's no wondering, no debating who gets the title fight. After the tournament is over, we'll go back to all that. But right now, to get to that belt, it's a direct path. You got three fights. Get there. All right. Thanks very much, Corey. Kevin? Hey, Corey. Uh, obviously, you know, with your opponent being named, you know, all of us had a little question, like, were you expecting once they uh, Bellator signed uh, Rumble Johnson, Yoel Romero? You know, do you think uh, you are going to get one of them instead of the, you know, the rookie to the division? Um, I mean, you got to think Yoel and Rumble is technically the rookie to the division too in Bellator. But at that time, it was like, I didn't even think they would do Yoel and Rumble the first round, to be honest, because it was three big names, three big guys that just came from UFC or left UFC, whatever it was. So, to be honest, I thought they was going to give Yoel and Rumble somebody else, you know, especially Rumble being out for two, three years, let him get a little tune-up fight or whatever, let Yoel get one, and then they would pick, if one of us didn't get the title fight, they would make whoever didn't get the title fight fight the other. 
And that was my mindset. But then when my manager called me, what, I can't remember, for like two, three weeks ago and said they talking about doing a tournament, then I was like, okay, that's even interesting. That's real interesting. I got really excited. So we're here, and I'm okay with it. Chris? Hi, Corey. How's it going? Good. How about yourself, Chris? Pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, how has hunting been for you this season? Hey, I was just talking to one of the PR guys. Hunting has been on this year. Um, I passed up a lot of deer because I was waiting for the bigger ones. I've seen them. I learned a lot this season. And uh, I'm not completely happy, but it ain't over yet. I got eight days. If I get back tomorrow, I'll have seven in time to get to the stand and kind of capitalize on them and just try to get as much meat in the freezer for camp as possible. Get that venison lean meat, baby. Fuel these muscles. <laughs> awesome. And, um, you know, going back to a couple of months ago when Rumble and Romero were signs, there's like a lot of memes, you know, sent to you about, you know, your place in all of this. Uh, what was your favorite meme and what was your reaction to them getting signs? My favorite one, I actually posted the favorite one. Uh, it was a guy who was eating a bag of cookies. <laughs> <laughs> and I know where Rumble like pops up around the corner <laughs> looking for the oh, uh, guy pops around the corner. Somebody had Rumble's name over asking for the cookie. And the guy was like, damn, I can't have shit around here. And I actually posted it. I think it got like 20,000 likes and a whole bunch of 100,000 views. And I I still to this day when I see that one, I laugh. It was funny. But, uh, you know, you got to have a sense of humor with these things. And I'm cool with Rumble, so ain't no bad blood. And yo, you know, I've always respected him. So, like I said, I'm excited and glad that those guys came over here to join me, Bader, Phil, Nimco, and all the other names in the 205. We're just going to help grow the division. And my reaction to those guys coming was, like I said, I'm just excited. You know, just bringing more is putting a stamp on that the claim that Bellator has the best 205 division. You know, if you think about it right now, the UFC, they have, uh, yeah, you put it this way, their 205 division, I don't think is that good that they are letting the 85er come up to fight for the 205 belt, you know, and I feel that right there speaks enough volume. Go to Edward. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned the uh, the meme that you, that you posted because that's ac actually what I wanted to ask you about. Um, the, the one you selected, I saw it as your reaction to Rumble being signed. Um, but now that you're in the tournament, is there, I mean, obviously you have the opponent that you have in front of you that you're focused on now, but, um, was he or Yoel or any of those guys, when you heard their signing, were they more of a, a concern to you for to, coming into your division? I mean, nobody is, it's never a concern. I'm like, I said, I'm here. I train to be the best. So when you get an opponent, whether it's freak scary knockout or crazy good jujitsu, the plan is you go to the drawing board with your coaches, you figure out a game plan to defeat them. If you don't feel you can beat that person, you have no reason to be in this sport. I feel I can beat anybody in the world at any given time. I go in there with the right game plan, the right mindset, and stick to it. It's game over. And when they were signed, like my teammates said, hey, just two more victims. We got to worry about you taking out. There was nothing else to it. Because he's on the other side of the, the bracket, too. So I was just wondering if he was somebody in particular that you were concerned with. But you just answered I mean, my question. Thank you. Even with them being on the other side of the bracket, if the tournament didn't happen either way. But now it just means it's going to get that much more exciting when it gets to the finals. You know what I mean? If one of those guys end up making it to the finals as well as me, that would be awesome. You know, two of the top tier 205ers or two top tier guys that came from another division fighting it out to be the best, you know, again, put that stamp on the best 205 division in the game. All right. Last question here from Dylan. Hey there, Corey. Appreciate you making some time here. I'm noticing with the brackets, the championship being on the other side here, but on your side, there's certain unique opportunities afforded to you. And as far as there could be the option to say face, you know, Ryan Bader in a future fight, who is of course the, lineal heavyweight champion do you kind of allow yourself to think about having options in multiple weight classes and would a future heavyweight intrigue you at all i mean that was an initial plan i mean even in the ufc when i was there the plan was when i got to the belt you know start opening up fight the heavyweight too you know i debuted as a fighter my first three fights before i did the ultimate fighter was heavyweight and uh i still walk around a big guy i'm like 236 right now so I can fight a heavyweight if I bulk up and definitely train there with heavier guys. So to be him, you know, I mean, it'd just be another win. You know, it wouldn't mean anything for the heavyweight division. You know, styles make fights. He has good styles against the guys he fight. But there's a lot of other big guys at 
heavyweight that can give him a problem that he hasn't fought yet. And it could be the same thing for me. But at the same time, once I get the belt, I'm definitely open to fighting 205 and heavyweight. Thanks for the time, Corey. Thank you. All right, yes, thank you very much.